So I've started this new series called Tank Showcase, where we look in more detail at a particular tank. And following the first video I uploaded, I had a comment on YouTube saying, please, can we look at the E75? So that is what we're going to do. We're going to have a look at the German Tier 9 Tech Tree Heavy Tank, the E75. A tank that a lot of people seem to struggle in. A tank that a lot of people think is pretty poor. Does it deserve that reputation? Well, that's what we're here to find out. Hello again everybody and welcome back to Fujit's Blitz and another tank showcase, this time on this little beast, the tier 9 German Heavy, the E75, a tank a lot of people seem to struggle in. That's what it looks like in its render, it's a funky looking tank, but let's see how you can get your paws on this thing. So as I said, this is a tier 9 Heavy, and there it is over there on the right hand side, but how do you get to it? Well, there are multiple routes, as we will now see. But they all start basically here, with the Panzer 4D, which is the first tank after the split with the Panzer 3, and it's a tier 4 tank. From the Panzer 4D, you can either go down the Panzer 4G line, or you can split down to the little Lippard, the tier 5 light tank. If you go down the Lippard route, as you can see, you have to follow it to the VK3001D, which in turn will lead you to the Panther, the tier 7 medium tank. Once you're at the Panther, you have a choice. You can either continue down the medium route with the Panther 2 that leads you to the E50 and the E50M, or you can jump up to the tier 8 Tiger 2, which takes you down the heavy route leading you to the E75, then on to the E100, which is highlighted here. Alternatively, from the Panzer 4D, instead of dropping down to the Little Lippard, you can carry on to the Panzer 4G, where it will split, allowing you to either proceed down the VK3001P route, which takes you to the Tiger P, then on to the 72 and the Mouse, or you can drop down to the VK3601H, which will take you down the alternative heavy route, eventually leading you along the alternative heavy line. You can see there, it's the VK3601H all goes all the way through Tiger 1, Tiger 2, onto the E75, further onto the E100. So you have multiple choices. And to be honest with you, you can catch quite a few tanks along this route, but it is a hard grind, let's not kid ourselves. So that's how you get to the E75, but what do you get once you get there? Well, you get a Tier 9 German Heavy, which has reasonable damage, quite a poor rate of fire, pretty good penetration, armor, well, we'll get to that in a moment, speed, it's pretty okay, don't forget it is a heavy tank, and rotation, not too bad. Taking a look at the more detailed stats, hit points 2,332, armor we'll deal with in a bit, engine fire, I'll get to that also. View range isn't too bad, concealment pretty poor, it is a heavy after all. DPM is just over 2,000 with a reload time of 13.3 seconds. You can see their penetration is not too bad and the average damage I am now for isn't too bad either. Aim time is just shy of 5 seconds and it's got pretty good gun depression 8 degrees. It's a heavy after all. Speed wise it ain't too bad. So what about the armor? Well as you can see like most German heavies, especially this sort of line, the turret is pretty solid along with the front plate. Bottom plate however not so much. When we stick it alongside an ST1, which it will face, you can see that front on, it's pretty much a big red tomato. It's not a bad side scraper either. You need to be careful of that bottom plate and the mantle, however, along with the commander's hatch. If I then change it to its premium ammunition, the ST1, which is heat, you can see, it, again, it's pretty heavily armored apart from that front mantle. And that 8 degrees does allow you to get into some good positions and keep that bottom plate pretty protected. So we've seen the detailed stats, but how does it compare when stacked up against the other tier 9 heavies? 
The only one I've missed out here is the French autoloader and there are no premium tanks. And you can see straight away, the DPM is not great. In fact, the only time the DPM becomes great is when it's against a Maotian, and that's across all its ammunition. The same goes for penetration. The penetration isn't that good either compared to the other tanks. It's just the way it goes. However, its top end alpha across all the shells is not bad. I mean, it's okay. It's quite a good tank damage wise. You can see there that the rate of fire across all its shells is pretty poor also. I mean, it's barely touching five rounds a minute. Again, only beating the Maotian. The same with the reload. I mean, the reload is a long time. Again, it only beats the Maotian. When we look at the aim time, however, it's pretty average. It's nothing amazing. And you can see there, gun depression wise, for a heavy, it's pretty nice. Credit coefficiency is nice also. Again, it's just being beaten by the Maotian. But you can see here, that is win rate, 53%. That ain't too bad. It ain't brilliant, but it ain't too bad either. So when it compares to the other tanks, it's pretty middle of the road, let's be honest. Now I did say we'd go back and look at the chance of engine fire. This thing is quite susceptible to engine fires. The 103 hits that bottom plate, which is weak, and sets me on fire. I'm just about to get rid of that fire, and then, guess what? I get another engine fire. It happens. So engine fire notwithstanding, what equipment do I load on this thing? Well, you can see there I've got the repair kit because you can get tracked. I get the multi-purpose restoration pack because I always do. And I get adrenaline because I need that extra load time. When we come to provisions, I load chocolate because I want the crew to work overtime. The, lo the load and the aim time is quite long. I also put in the protective kit. Sometimes I have the improved uh, fuel very rarely, I normally shove in more chocolate bars because again, I want that load time to come down. It, it's, it's quite long, 13 and a half seconds. Ammunition, that's my general loadout. As you can see, I have a lot of AP, not so much HE. When it comes to equipment, I generally don't run it with calibrated shells. The penetration is not too bad. So I stick in the gun rammer instead, getting that load time down. I have a defense system, Improved optics, no point running a camo net. I have enhanced gun laying device. I shove in the improved assembly to give me more hit points. I shove in an engine accelerator and the vertical stab. So we've got rid of all the boring stuff, namely the stats, etc, etc. What's it actually like to play this thing? Well, you know what? It's actually a nice tank. Now I must admit, I'm not going to be setting the world on fire in this game, but I did enjoy it. So, what we're, we're here on Hallas, it's a, basically a tier 9, tier 10 game. Get some nice rolls into that IS-3 Defender. I mean, the tank has a long reload. And that is the only downside to rolling out in an E-75. The bottom plate is also a bit of a pain in the backside because it is so weak. Aside from that, it's actually a really nice heavy. It, the playstyle is very much the same as that what you find in the Tiger II. So if you like your Tiger II, you're going to be enjoying your E75. As you can see, so far I've bounced 640. I've only done shy of 500 damage. I am not setting any records in this thing, I must admit. But that's a nice snapshot on the IS-3 Defender right into his back plate. Again, that reload really does come into play and really does let you down. I mean, I'm trying to smack that 704, but I just can't because the reload just doesn't let me. However, I mean, the aim time, uh, it's difficult to snapshot. Couldn't get one on the PTA there. Love to get the 704, just can't do it. That load time is just long, and that's with all the equipment and everything loaded and with the adrenaline dropped. But the thing is, I mean, you've got some good armor you've got some good maneuverability. It's not a bad tank. I mean, I'm getting smacked around here, but this thing can take it, to be honest with you. And it doesn't suffer from penetration problems. I mean, it's easily going to pen the IS-3. There's only one tank left. We've only done the 1700 damage. 
we block 640, we've taken one kill, it ain't exactly setting the world on fire, but we do enough in the tank. That's the way I like the E75, you get a third class, like I said, not setting the world on fire. So as we didn't set the world on fire, I couldn't just leave that one replay and I had to roll out in the tank again, this time on New Bay. And now I'm going to show you what this tank can really do. So I'm going to get into this position here and I'm going to effectively, oh, they're spotted. So I'm going to roll back and I take a pop into the T69, in, sorry, T54 first. I'm going to roll back and then I'm going to side scrape off this building and these steps because you can in an E75. As I told you, it's not a bad side scraper. And when it wants to, the gun is pretty nice. I mean, that wasn't a snapshot. I've already bounced. 1100 damage because that bottom plate is protected so you can do this in an e75 you can side scrape effectively and you know, switch to the pramo there get that e75 into the mantle and bounce the object 704 for good measure this is a beautiful little position when all the tanks are over there because you can side scrape off here quite easily and you do really become a big bouncy castle and that's the thing about the e75 it does have the ability to bounce a lot the armor is pretty good okay i didn't bounce that one there but it it, it takes 600 out of me but it's not the end of the world so far i've bounced 1700 now i've bounced 1900 now i've bounced 2400 now i've bounced 2600 make that 3290 make that 3515 that is a lot of damaged bounced and that that just goes to show what the e75 is capable of doing not only that we've knocked out 1700 make that 2000 damage we are having a good time here in this little spot thing is we can't stay here forever as much as we would love to so we need to get involved in the action Okay, I'm, I'm going to bounce the low, but then he's going to bounce me too. I've now bounced just shy of 4,000 in this thing. I mean, it is a beautiful tank once you get used to it. T49, switch to HE, roll 572 into him. Bit low when the end Alpha is 600. That reload, though, comes in to kick you in the backside again. I would love to smack him, but the reload, wow. And like I said, I mean, 13 and a half seconds is a long time. It really, really is. The thing is, though, I mean, we've churned up 2,700 damage so far. They're all pretty low hit points over there. You may wonder why I didn't go for the E75, but I went for the low, because he is a bit more dangerous at the moment. Because why? Well, I'll show you why. The E75 is going to roll up. He's going to try and turn to shoot me and show his bottom plate. Remember what I said about engine fires? Boom, there we go, set him on fire pretty easily. He's now a one shot to everybody on the field. And as if by magic, he disappears. Now I'm gonna have a look at the 704, knock him for 450 odd. That's quite a nice roll. We now dished out 4,196 damage. We're not gonna bounce anymore, I don't think. We've only taken zero kills. So, you know, we're having a good time though. And this is what you can do in an E75, guys. You can really have a lot of fun. And you can really dominate the battlefield. Switch it back to HE. Hello, T49. Goodbye, T49. Now dished out 4,377 damage. Although there is a blind shot in there, so it's not showing it. The ribbons will show you more. Two tanks left. Drop down. T54. Hello. Boom, there we go. Sorry, T54, T69. Boom, there we go. We've now done 5,167 damage according to the ribbons. This is a good roll in the E75. And it really goes to highlight what this tank can do. Kill the last tank, the T69. He's gone. 5,279 damage. It's actually 5,420 damage. Two kills. A nice mastery and a shed load of ribbons, including a steel wall. As you can see there, we dominated the battlefield nicely. If I look at the detailed stats, which we're going to do, fired 14 shots. There were 13 hits, 
13 pens, six enemies damaged, two destroyed. We did 5,420. That is what you can do in an E75. So that has been my tank showcase on this little beastie, the E75, the German Tier 9 Tech Tree Heavy Tank. I've been Fuji. Like I said, I mean, I love this tank, to be honest with you. A lot of people think it's tricky. I actually don't. I think it's just one of those tanks that you need to really be mindful of where you stick it and where you place it. If you put it in the wrong place, you're going to get punished. The bottom plate is wide open, it is quite susceptible to an engine fire, and it does have a long reload. However, in the right hands, in the right place, this tank is absolutely beautiful. And I'm going to leave you here in a game that we lost, but I do over 3,000 damage and I'm going to be brawling with quite a few tanks. By all means, guys, if you haven't yet, press subscribe. It's a beautiful thing to do. Costs you nothing, takes about a second of your time and puts a big smile on my face. Don't forget, comment, like, and by all means, share this video. Tell the other community players in Blitz how this tank really is. I'd like to say a big thank you to all my subscribers because without you these videos would be absolutely meaningless and I'd like to say a thank you to my patrons because really without you it would be a lot harder to make these videos full stop and as per usual I want to do a big shout out to my one and only YouTube member Hyperspider7. Thank you for still being a YouTube member man. If you want to be a YouTube member or a patron or whatever, the details are on my YouTube channel. And until the next time, guys, please roll out and enjoy the E75. But remember, stay safe out there. Have fun on the battlefield and happy tanking. Because at the end of the day, that is what it's all about. Having fun and being happy.